So here we go with the last lecture in this uh, section. Uh, we're going to talk about the derivative rules with uh, inverse uh, trigonometric functions. So let me just write down uh, the rules for you. And so we have uh, six basic trigonometric uh, functions. Uh, we have the sine of x, cosine of x, tan x, the cosecant of x, secant x, and cotan of x. And so we have six inverse trigonometric functions. And so let's start with the sine. We have sine inverse of x, cosine inverse of x, and tan inverse of x. And then next to that we will have uh, cosecant inverse of x, uh, secant inverse of x, and finally cotan inverse of x. And so just to remind you about inverse functions, the idea is that if you have a function like sine of x and you plug in a point, let's say we plug in the point uh, pi over 2, sine of x will take pi over 2 over here to the number 1. And then if you apply sine inverse to it, so sine inverse of uh, x, if you apply that to 1, it'll take you back to pi over 2. So inverse functions just take you back. So a function takes you one way, the inverse will take you back to the other. Uh, for these derivatives, uh, we will prove uh, that they're equal to what they are in the next uh, section. But for now, if you take d dx of sine inverse of x, we want to memorize that it's 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared and then the derivative of cosine inverse of x is almost the same thing, it just differs by a negative sign. So it's negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then finally, the tan inverse of x, the derivative of it, so d dx of tan inverse of x is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So these are the ones we want to focus on uh, right now. I uh, will write down the other two, uh, but we won't be concerned with them too much until the next uh, section. So we have ddx of cosine or cosecant inverse of x, and it's equal to negative 1 over x square root of x squared minus 1, and ddx of sine inverse of x, secant inverse of x is equal to basically the same thing without the negative in front, so 1 over x square root x squared minus 1. And then finally, the derivative of cotan inverse of x is equal to, just like the derivative of tan inverse of x, 1 over 1 plus x squared, but you guessed it with a negative sign in front. So it's really easy to remember the cos at least, they all have negative, so cosine inverse has a negative, cosecant inverse has a negative, cotan has an in inverse has a negative. Now the actual derivatives are a little bit hard uh, to remember. That's why we're just going to start with these first three. So make sure you know this one, this one, and that one. And in the next section, we'll talk about how you can actually uh, derive these. Um, by using something called implicit uh, differentiation. Uh, for now, we're just going to do the first uh, three here. So let's do some problems uh, with these. And so in the first example, we have 2x plus 8 cosine inverse of x plus 7. So if we want to find the derivative, we just say f prime of x is equal to, and the derivative of 2x is just the number 2, so we copy down the 2, plus, then we have 8 times, derivative, times cosine inverse of x, so to find it, this derivative, we just copy down the 8 and take the derivative of cosine inverse of x, which is negative 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we have plus the derivative of 7, which is 0. And so my final answer will be equal to 2 minus an 8 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Let's look at a few examples that are a little bit harder. Uh, so now we're going to introduce the product quotient and chain rules here. And so if we want to find uh, derivative A, in part A here, g of x, let's copy it down. So uh, we have g of x 
equal to, maybe we'll go back to black. And so we have x squared plus 1 quantity squared times tan inverse of x. And the hardest thing usually is trying to figure out which rule to apply. So when you look at this, hopefully you realize, well, you're not going to use a quotient rule. And you're not going to apply the chain rule first. If you try to apply the chain rule, it's just going to apply to this. What you actually want to use is what's called the product rule. And this is your first function. And tan inverse of x is your second function. And so then I just simply say the rule to me to myself, so g prime of x is equal to 2 times x squared plus 1 to the first power and times the derivative of the inside, so 2x. And so it's just a chain rule, derivative of the outside, so that 2 comes down and becomes a 1, times the derivative of its inside, so the derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, times the second function, so just copy down the second function, tan inverse of x, plus the first. So I copy down the first, x squared plus 1, quantity squared. And then times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the second, so the derivative of tan inverse of x, is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Derivative is done, and the rest is a little bit of algebra. So this is going to be equal to, I'll multiply the 2's together and get a 4x, and then times x squared plus 1, times the tan inverse of x, and then plus, now here I have x squared plus 1 squared on top and a 1 plus x squared on the bottom, so one of these 1 plus x squareds are going to cancel, so I'm just going to get uh, x squared plus 1 on top. And then I'll factor out what they have in common, because they have an x squared plus 1 in common, so I'll factor out this x squared plus 1. And then that'll be all times 4x tan inverse of x, then plus just the number 1. Right, so remember, it's just a game, this times this is that, and then 1 times this is exactly this. And so there's my answer for A. For part B, we're going to use a quotient rule. And so let's copy this one down. So part B, we have h of x equal to sine inverse of x all divided by x. And so what we want to do in this one is you want to identify your high and your low. And let's do that in a different color. So I have a high function, and I have a low function. And I know the quotient rule. It's low d high minus high d low all over low squared. And away we go. So h prime of x. is equal to, uh, so the low is x, times the derivative of the high, so times 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, minus the high, which is sine inverse of x, times the derivative of the low, which is 1, all divided by the low squared, so x squared. Right, so the derivative is done, and the rest is a bit of algebra. So to do the algebra, what I want to do is factor out this 1 over 1 minus uh, x squared. So I'll factor out a 1 over 1 minus x squared. And it's the square root of that. It's the square root of 1 minus x squared. And I'll play this game, what goes here minus what goes there. And then this is all divided by x squared. And so right here, I just put an x, because x times this is that. And then over here, I have to be a, write a little bit more. So I'm going to erase that because I need some more room. So over here, I'm going to have to write a square root of 1 minus x squared. And then right here, write a sine inverse of x. Because when I multiply this by that, the square roots of 1 minus uh, x squared is going to cancel. On top and bottom, I'll just be left with the sine inverse of x. And so my final answer. For this problem, this is going to be equal to, on top I have x minus the square root of 1 minus x squared with a sine inverse of x on the outside here, then all divided by an x squared with the square root of 1 minus x squared down here.
And so there's my answer for uh, the derivative of uh, h. All right, last problem. So we did a product rule problem. We did a quotient rule problem involving inverse trigonometric functions. Now we want to do, this was probably a chain rule problem. Um, and so let's copy this down. So on part C, we have f of x equal to the tan inverse of, I think it was x squared. Let's go back up and check. Yeah, tan inverse of x squared. And I want to do uh, take the derivative of this. So to take the derivative, it's going to be a chain rule. And, and be careful, because a lot of students will think this is the prod rule. They'll think this is tan inverse times x squared. But that's never true. Right, tan inverse is a, a function. So I always tell you guys, you know, this is like tan inverse is like a car, and x squared is like its passenger. And, you know, you, they're not multiplied by each other because it's inside. Uh, the tan inverse, inverse function. Uh, but what you do have is you have an inside and an outside. So this is the inside and this is the outside function. And to apply the chain rule, we say the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And so f prime of x is equal to the derivative of tan inverse is 1 over 1 plus whatever is on the inside squared. So you have the inside, which is x squared, squared, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x squared is just a 2x. So this is equal to 2x all divided by 1 plus x to the fourth. So that's all the problems I prepared for this lecture. Uh, since we have lots of time, this is only what, 12 minutes right now into the video, let's play a little game. What if I don't know if these uh, answers are correct? Uh, what, 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 can I, uh, what can I do to check my work? So you guys should know a little bit, or you should know about Wolfram Alpha. There are ways to check your work on the uh, Internet. And so I'm going to go to Wolfram Alpha. And what I can do is I can actually plug in these various functions. So say something like uh, derivative and do tan. Oh, I wonder how to do tan inverse. So you'd probably do arctan. So you may not know. Another way to write tan inverse is arctan. And you put arctan, derivative of arctan x, and you get this. Now we did x squared, so I'll do raise the 2. And let's see what we get out. And we get 2x divided by x to the fourth plus uh, 1. I'm guessing this must be the graph uh, of these things here. Um, and even have the partial fraction uh, expansion, which you guys will learn about uh, in Calc 2. So all kinds of interesting uh, information uh, here about this function, tan inverse of uh, x squared. Right, but here's the, the answer, and it, hopefully it checks up or checks out with uh, uh, with my answer. So let's take a look and see. Yep, checks out with my answer. And let's check the one above it too. Why not? Because that one was pretty complicated. Well, the answer looks complicated. So sine inverse of x divided by x. So you can check that one. Uh, so we'll come back up here. And we'll just type in, instead of arc tan, we'll type in arc sine. And we'll put an x here. And we'll just divide that then by x, so divided by x, so let's hit enter and see what happens. Oh, so there it is right there. They didn't simplify it, um, so basically they have the first answer we have here, so they should simplify it, but you know, it's Wolfram Alpha, it's a computer doing this. Um, the rest of the stuff is a standard computation time exceeded. Oh, here it goes. So it puts up some graphs of these things, um, tells you some more interesting information uh, about it. Uh, but that's the answer, and it's exactly what uh, we have, so we know we did it right. So it's a nice little tool that you guys should know about that you can use to check uh, your work. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.